Welcome guys to today's class. In today's video, we want to discuss another important experiment on heat capacity. We have done the first one, so we want to do the second one on heat capacity. Look at the apparatus on the board. 500 centimeter cube beaker. Water. Thermometer, 100 gram mass. Stera, measuring cylinder, pair of tongs, and Bunsen burner. Look at the diagram showing this apparatus we talk about now let's go to procedures using a measuring cylinder measure 100 cm cube of water into a beaker we do it record this volume as v measure and record the initial temperatures of the water as e1 calculate the mass of water m using the formula mass equal to density times volume we have density of water equal to 1 gram per cm cube. That one is constant. Using a pair of tongs, this. Hold the 100 gram mass in the flame of a Bunsen burner for 4 minutes. Quickly transfer the hot 100 gram mass into the beaker of water. Stir gently and record the final temperature, T2. Evaluate T equals to T2 minus T1 and look at the table of values. Okay. We want to understand the concept why we are performing this experiment. This experiment is performed to be able to demonstrate the variation of equilibrium temperature or final temperature of mixture in the different volume of water. That means when you finish heating that word mass so to speak when you finish heating it and you check the temperature the temperature of it must be constant before you what put it inside the word water it shouldn't be having different different temperature maybe at 100 if you heat it to 100 degrees celsius you put it here you now heat it at 150 degrees Celsius, you put it here. That is not what they mean. What they mean is heat it at a constant temperature. Note that constant temperature and maintain it. Let's say we heat it at 100 degrees Celsius, we note it. And we maintain that 100 degrees Celsius before what? Putting it inside the water. Now, when you put it inside the water, we'll be getting a mixture. A mixture of water and what still? A mixture of water and that mass. That we call it equilibrium temperature of the mixture. That is the concept of this word experiment. And so when we finish doing it, we we'll put our values here. They said our volume should be in 100 cm cube, 200 cm cube, 300 cm cube, 400 cm cube, and what? 500 cm cube. That is about your what? Your okay. The mass, the mass is, the mass is, uh, the mass. Okay, this is volume. Yes, yes, volume is what we talk about. So the volume is hundred cm cube. Then for the mass, the mass of that hot this um, hot water is constant. Is hundred gram. But the mass of water, this one is mass for water. The mass of water is what they say we should get it by saying density times volume. You note it. And so, we want to perform this experiment and see how we can get our table of values. Now, to be able to get this your table well, remember that they have given you the formula to get your mass. You say density times volume. You'll be multiplying with this. You will be getting 100.00. That is volume is 100. Density is 1. It will be giving 100.00. Are you getting it? Then 200. This is volume 200 times 1. It will be giving you 200.00. Then to get one of mass of water for 300 cm cube, you get what? 300, 0, 0, 0, 0, and what? 500.00. That is about this. Okay? Then this TC means the constant temperature you have to heat that mass given to you. 
In this case, the mass given to us is a mass of steel. Mass of steel. Mass of steel is equal to what? 100 gram. Now, you have to what? Use this pair of tongue and hold that mass of steel. Hit it with your flame. Now, we heated it at temperature. We heated it to temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. That temperature, we call it constant temperature of that word mass. We ensure that we heat it to 100 degrees Celsius. Use a thermometer to check it out. Check it up if it is 100 degrees Celsius. Then, before putting it inside the water, I get in it before putting it inside the 100 cm cube. We heat it again to 100 degrees Celsius. Put it to 200 cm cube of water. Heat it again to 100 degrees Celsius. So we maintain that temperature. We heat that mass to. We maintain it. If you do not maintain that temperature, you will not be able to get your work. This experiment done. That means one of the precautions you have to note here is that care was taken to see that the mass is heated at 100 degrees Celsius each time the experiment is to be repeated. At 100 degrees Celsius. Once you are not able to what heat it at uh, to 100 degrees Celsius, you will realize that you will get different values and your experiment will not be perfect. That is one. So that means the TC is constant. We'll write it here. 100, 100, 100, 100, 100. That does not mean that you must hit it to 100 though. If it is instructed that you have to hit it to maybe 150 degrees Celsius, note that you have to maintain it. Maintain it is constant each time 150 each time 150. It is because We decided to we were instructed when we perform this experiment to make sure that it is at 100 degrees Celsius That is why we are using 100 degrees Celsius. So if the if you are instructed otherwise to use 150 degrees Celsius maintain it Not when you write 150 write 100 write 20 write different values. No maintain your 150 if you are instructed to use 150 degrees Celsius. But if you are instructed to use 100 degrees Celsius, it means that you have to heat it, ensure that until it gets to 100 degrees Celsius, use your thermometer to check the what, the temperature. Until it gets to 100 degrees Celsius, then you can now say you have gotten your constant temperature of that mass, so that you can now put it inside the wall or into the water. Okay. We have gotten it. Then this T2 is the final temperature or the equilibrium temperature when you put it inside the water. The work of the sterile is to equilibrate the temperature to make sure that the temperature moves around this liquid. Are you getting it? Now, what is your T1? T1 is the initial temperature of water. The water we used, the temperature of it was 25 degrees Celsius. It was just at room temperature. The temperature was at room temperature. Then we say that our T1 is equal to 25 degrees Celsius. That is the initial temperature of water before putting that mass of hot steel into it. That is one. And so, after you have done with this, you now tell them that your T2, how can I get it? Because we need to get our T2. This will bring in the principle of what? Heat. Here. Where we say heat loss. Heat loss equal to heat gain. Now, heat loss by what? Remember, heat flows from what? Higher temperature to lower temperature. Then, that means heat flows from hot substance to what? Cool substance. So heat loss by what? The hot steel. The hot what? Steel. It was a heat gain by what? The water. Because water will be gaining the heat. And the what? The steel will be losing the heat. Look at how it goes. This is the what? The hot steel. Whose temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. And the water, the temperature is what? 25 degrees Celsius. That means this water will be gaining the temperature till this point. 
22. Whereas this hot steel will be losing temperature coming down to what? T1. This sun will be gaining. This sun will gain to T2. Why this sun will lose to T1? That T2 will now. This sun will be gaining the temperature to what? T2. Why this will be losing the temperature to T1? That means that T2 will tell you the final temperature of the mixture of steel and water. Now, how do we do it? We say that change in temperature here will be what? 100 minus T2. That is, when this, when this move down to T2, it means it will lose this temperature to get to T2. Whereas this one will what? We say T2 minus 25. That is the temperature it will gain to get to what? So this 25 will gain T2 minus 25 to get to T2. 100 will be what? Losing 100 minus T2 to get to what? T2. It will lose 100 minus T2 to get to T2. Why this one will be gaining T2 minus 25 to get to what? T2. Yes. That means, for instance, if here is let's say 50. The implication is that 100 minus 50 is 50. This hot steel, which is 100 degrees Celsius, will be losing 50 degrees Celsius to get to, to get to this 50. Whereas this one, which is 50 minus 25, 25, this water will be gaining 25 degrees Celsius to get to what 50. That is what we mean. So we are just using the 50 as a case or as an example. Let's get our T2. We will say mass of the steel, C of the steel bracket what? 100 minus what? T2 equals to mass of water, C of water, T2 minus what? 25. Okay? That is formula. Why didn't we consider maybe mass of water, C of water, T2 minus 25 plus mass of the beaker c of the beaker t2 minus 25. why do we didn't consider this uh, beaker own is because beaker is not a what conductor of heat it's not a metal are you getting it so the 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 we are to neglect this beaker why computing this because it's not a conductor of heat it's a pole conductor of heat and so we use the steel and the water and consider the two only. Yes, because only the water will be gaining the heat. Are you getting it? Uh -huh. Whereas the steel is losing the heat. The the glass, the glass, the beaker glass will not be able to what be gaining the heat as well. Yes. So we have to neglect it. So we are going by this formula now. Going by this formula, now going by this formula, the mass of the steel was given to us as 100 gram. Look at it. The mass of the hot steel, 100 gram. The C of the steel is called the specific heat capacity of the steel. It's constant, 0 0.466 joule per watt, gram per Kelvin or Celsius. Then, mass of water, mass of water was given to us in this case, mass of water was given to us. We say that the mass of water is 100, 100, 200. So it's 100 gram, 200 gram, 300 gram, 400 gram, and 500 watt gram. Then the sea of water. C of water equal to 4.2 joule per gram per watt Kelvin. Now we have to make T2 subject of formula. We say, expanding this, we have MSCS 
times 100 minus MST CS T2 equals to MWCW T2 minus MWCW bracket 25. And so making this subject of formula, I'll carry this. If I carry this, I'll take it to this side, carry this, take it to this side. We have we have that when this when this go here, this one will go here. We have that M S C S T2 plus what? M W C W T2 equals to M S C X times 100 minus MWCW times what? 25. Therefore, factorizing, we have that T2, breaking out T2 in common here, we say MSC what? CS bracket 100 minus MW is it minus? When this go here, this is plus, please, not minus. Plus MWCW25 all over MSCS plus MWCW. So look at the formula we are to use to sort this out. Are you getting it? We are the mass of water will be what changing mass of water will be changing okay for your first one for the first value of t2 mass of steel is 100 times cs of the steel 0 0.4 cc times 100 plus mass of water 100 times 4.2 times 25 all over mass of this 100 times 0 0.4 6 is plus 100 times 4.2 so when we finish doing this, we will change the mass of water to 200 here, 200, and get the next value. You use your calculator, bracket, bracket, 100 times 0.4 cc times 100 plus bracket 100 times 4.2 times 25. It will give me one one five one C zero. All over, I will check this denominator. One hundred times zero point four C C plus one hundred times four point two. Four six six point six. So when I say one five one C zero divided by four six six point six, that will be giving you thirty two point five. Wow, this one is thirty two point five zero. We change here to two hundred because the mass of water will be now be changing. I change here to 200. Change the mass of water to 200. We repeat the same process again. Bracket bracket 100 times 0 0.4 cc times 100 plus bracket 200 times 4.2 times 
times 25 divided by bracket bracket 100 times 0.4 cc plus 200 times 4.2 we'll be having 28.9 28.9 Okay, we go again change here to what 300 Change here to 300 We say bracket bracket 100 times 0 0.4 cc times 100 plus bracket 300 times 4.2 times 25 divided by bracket 100 times 0 0.4 cc plus bracket 300 times 4.2 We'll be having 27.70. Do you notice something? The temperature is going down. Meaning that the higher the volume, the higher the volume of water, the more the less you will get in your final temperature of the mixture. Let's continue. Change here to what four. Change here to what four. We go again, bracket bracket, bracket bracket, 100 times 0 0.4 cc times 100 plus bracket 400 times 4.2 times 25 divided by bracket bracket 100 times 0 0.4 cc plus 400 times 4.2 27.0 please if you are not able to put everything as i'm doing it don't try to imitate me just do the numerator right do the denominator right and divide Please, what matters is how accurate you are, not how fast you did it. Okay. We, we change here to 500. We change here to 500. So if you get any number higher than this, you are wrong. Okay. Bracket, bracket, 100 times 0 0.4 cc times 100 plus bracket 500 times 4.2 times 25 divided by bracket 100 100 times 0 0.4 cc then 500 times what 4.2 we will be having 26.60. Wow. That means this is what you'll be getting when the temperature or the constant temperature given to you for that hot metal is 100 degrees Celsius. Remember, we are using degrees Celsius. That does not mean that you cannot use degree Kelvin, which is the SI unit of temperature. We are using mass to be in gram. That does not mean you can convert to kilogram if it's rotted. We are using cm cube. That doesn't mean you cannot convert to meter cube. Yes, please notice. You want to convert this to meter cube, you divide by what? 10 raised to the power of 6. When you divide by 10 raised to the power of 6, you are converted to what? Meter cube. For this one, divide by 1000, you take it to what? To kilogram. For this one that is in Celsius, convert it to kilogram if you are instructed to do so. Convert it to kilogram by adding them to 273, 273, you will now get for this Celsius part. Then TC minus T2, 
means subtract these two. You will be doing 100 minus 32.5. That will be giving you 67.50. Please, see that I put this in two decimal place. Yes, because the reading accuracy of temperature is 0 0.1 or 0. Point, yeah, 0 0.1, so to speak. 0 0.1. So I, I put it to be in one decimal place. This zero I am attaching to it is just to put in two decimal places, but the real figure is in one decimal place. Are you getting it? You have to observe the reading accuracy of the instrument you are using while what tabulating your values. Okay. 100 minus 28.9, 71.1. What? One zero. 27.7. Seventy two point three twenty seven hundred minus twenty seven seventy three hundred minus twenty six point six seventy three point four zero you get it. Now remember that your T1 is 25 degrees Celsius. That is what we use. And so you subtract this minus 25. That is T2 minus T1 mean 32.5 minus 25. 32.5 minus 25. 7.50. 28.9. Minus 25. 3.9 Then 27.7 .7 minus 25 2.7 27 minus 25 2 This minus 25 1.60 So we have Cutting our table of values for this word experiment. Next, we want to go is to see question they ask us to do. Where they ask us to plot the graph and other things that will follow it. See that to get our table of values? Yes. Now, question says plot the graph of M and the vertical axis against T2 minus T1. Secondly, evaluate K equal to 50 over slope. We say that. A solid mass 100 gram at a temperature of this is placed in 100 gram of water at 20 degrees Celsius in a calorimeter of negligible heat capacity. If the final steady temperature is 60 degrees Celsius, calculate the specific heat capacity of the solid. This is just additional question to what we have. Now, first thing you have to do is write the word date of your experiment. Then write the title of the experiment, which is a graph of what m in gram against T2 minus T1 in degrees Celsius. Once you are done with that, then looking at your values, label your Cartesian axis. This is M in gram. This is uh, T2 minus T1 in degrees Celsius. We have this to be our what? The mass. Are you getting it? And uh, we have T2 minus T1. The mass, the highest is 500. At T2 minus T1, the highest is 7.5. Wow. Now watch, I can say that here is 0, 0,0 because they did not instruct start from the origin or do not start from the origin. I will take anyone I prefer. 0, 0,0, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. If you do not understand how to choose appropriate scale, Please type Chidon's Daniel. Watch it. 
Chidons, Daniel, how to choose appropriate scale. Type Chidons, Daniel, then include how to choose appropriate scale. Chidons, Daniel, how to choose appropriate scale on YouTube. You'll see the video we have uploaded on that so that you will get yourself acquainted with how to do that. Okay. Then, coming to T2 minus T1. Do you notice that as this one is increasing, this one is decreasing? That means we will have a negative graph. We have a negative. The highest is 7.5 and the lowest is 1.6. Wow. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We have 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So if I come and I put 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, 5.0, 6.0, 7 7.0. It will not accommodate 7.5. It will not accommodate 7.5. So what I will do is that I will use 1.5. 1.5, 3.0, 4.0, 5.0, 6.0, 7.0. So that is okay. Seven point five, nine point zero, please. This is nine point zero. Wow, we can go by this one. Then we are plotting hundred against seven point five. Hundred against seven point five. We we'll also plot two hundred against the mass of water is what we are considering. You no, know? two hundred against three point nine. This is 3. This is 4.5. 4.5 minus 3.9. This 4.5 minus 3.0. All over 10. If here is 10 buses. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If here is 10 buses. All over 10. That will be giving you 1.5 over 10. Equal to 0 0.15. Wow. This is 3.0. We are looking for 3.9. 3.9. So, 3 3.15, 3.3, 3.45, 3.6, 3.75, 3.9. So, at this point, at this point, we take it up to this two. We have been able to get the the each of the bus to be 0 0.15. So we'll be counting it to get our 3.9. Are you getting it? 2.7 against against 300. 0. Point, we go to 1.5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 3. Point, 2.7 and this. Okay, watch what I will do. 1 point, 0 0.15 times 5 will give me what? 0 0.75 plus 1.5. That will be giving me 2.25. I'm looking for 2.7. Well, I say 0 0.15 times, I will change from 5 to about 8. 1.2 1.2 plus 1.5 that'll be 2.7 wow so 8 at the 8 i'll take it up so i'll count to 8 i'll take it up towards here and put it then i will go again 2 against uh, 400 0 0.15 times 5 Gave me this plus 1.5, 2.25, and I am looking for 2.0. 0 0.15 times 2, 0 0.3 plus 1.5, that is 1.8. No, 0 0.15 times 4 plus 1.5, that will be giving 2.1. So that 2. Point Zero. We will be taking about 2.1. 1, 2, 3, 4. In between 3 and 4 is where we will locate it. Then, 
then 1.6 against 500 0 0.15 plus 1.5 1.65 so that means in between the 1.5 and the, the next small line we put it here so we we have noted this now the next thing you have to do is to use your broom or French curve and locate it. Use broom or French curve to locate it. Use broom or French curve to do what? Locate it. It should go in terms of curve. Are you getting it? So here are the points. Yes. Don't use free hand, just use broom so that you have a perfect what curve. Then when you locate the perfect curve, they ask you to get slope. Ordinary, you are not you can't get the slope of a what curve. What you get is gradient. Ordinary, you are not meant to get slope of a curve. What you get is gradient. Are you getting it? Every curve, you want to get gradient. Gradient simply means slope at a particular point on a curve. But because they instructed we are to get the word slope, all you just need to do is to check the word, the peak of the word curve, the peak of it. Check the peak of it and put your ruler. Draw your what? Straight line or line of best fit on that peak of that what? Curve. We have noted that because this is in a curve way, we cannot plot three, the mean of this and the mean of the, they cannot intersect because this is a curve. Are you getting it? So you will not do that. That is why what you just do is take a line that will touch the what? Apex. Apex of this curve. Look at if you have a curve like this, the apex is where the line should pass through. You have a curve. If you have a curve, you just get the apex. Apex. You get the apex of it. That is what I mean. Get the apex of it and get your slope. That your slope will be negative, obviously it will be negative how you say take line from here to here and to what to here you now notice that here is 400 500 divided by 400 500 minus 400 is 100 divided by 10 10 so here it can be 410 change a mass change a mass here you'll be having change a mass all over change in um, temperature equals to here about 410 minus 100 all over where this vertical and horizontal meet will be your what t2 then the other one will be your t1 so we take care to be what? T2 minus T1, 1.5 minus. Here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So here should be about the second point. You have 0 0.15 times, times 2. This plus 4.5. Right? 4.8. 4.8. That will be giving you 410 minus 100 divided by bracket 1.5 minus 4.8. You will be having minus 93.94 gram per watt degree Celsius. Is it negative? So we have gotten our slope, 
we have gotten our slope to be minus 93.94 gram. Remember that this is just a sketch of the graph. So use your standard graph. We'll take, um, draw your what? Your curve using your broom or your French curve. Then make sure that this is your line. This is your line of best fit. Pass through the what? Apex. Apex of this curve. Please, it will not obey that rule of you get the mean of the and plot because this is a curve. It's only when it is a straight line, a straight line that you will what obey that rule. But because this is a curve, it doesn't obey that word rule. Okay? And so we are gotten our slope. We say gram per what degree Celsius. They say evaluate k equal to 50 over what slope. K will be equal to 50 over what is our slope? Minus 93.94. Minus 93. So we say gram per watt Celsius. So 50 divided by minus 93.94. That will be giving us minus 0 0.53. And the units now will be degree Celsius per watt per gram because inverse of this is what degree Celsius per gram whatever you get from your slope are you getting from the line you draw to touch the watt to pass through the apex to pass through the apex of the curve the apex of the curve whatever you get from that slope evaluate it here remember I said ordinary any curve you don't get a slope from a curve. Ordinarily, you don't get a slope from a curve. But because they say get a slope, the only way you can get a slope from this curve is by drawing a straight line to pass through the apex of the curve. Every curve has its apex. So the straight line has to pass through that apex. Once you just pass through it, get your change in this over change in this, and you get this is change in what? Get the change and divide. Whatever it gives you becomes your slope. The slope has to be negative. Are you getting it? So we have gotten the graph is value of k. We got a question number I, I, I. They gave us that a solid mass, this mass of the solid is 100 gram. What to 0 0.1 kilogram? Why are we converting it to kilogram? Because SI unit of the constant given to you is in kilogram. Now, the temperature of the mass, the temperature of the of the solid is equal to 90. That is is very hot. Now it's placed inside 100 gram of water at 20 degrees Celsius. Mass of water equal to 0 0.1 kg. Then the initial temperature of it, the initial temperature of it, U1, is equal to what? 20 degrees Celsius. If the final temperature is 60, wow, final temperature is equal to 60 degrees Celsius, calculate the specific heat capacity of the solid, given that, okay. In solving question on heat, we say heat loss equal to heat gain. Heat loss by what? Heat loss by what? That hot what? Hot mass. Equal to heat gain by what? Water. Are you getting it? And so we say mass of the what? The steel. See? Mass of the what? The, the solid. C of the solid bracket. The solid will be losing the temperature, which we call Ts. It will be losing the temperature as I just demonstrated in the starting part of the video. The Ts minus T2 equals to mass of water, C of water, T2 minus T1. Are you getting it? We are looking for CS. CS equals to MW CW T2 minus T1 all over MS bracket T2 TS 
minus T2. What is mass of water? 0 0.1. C of water is 4200. Bracket T2 is 60. Minus T1 is 20. All over mass of the solid is 0 0.1 bracket. 90 minus what? 60. As the formula tells us. So we check it in our calculator. We say 0 0.1 times 4200 times 40 divided by bracket 0 0.1 times what? 30 equals to that will be giving us 5600 joule per kilogram per watt Kelvin and it is equivalent to 5.6 Okay. No, no more conversions. It's already is in kilogram per Kelvin. So you can say five point six times ten raised power of three joule per kilogram per Kelvin. So that is how to perform this experiment. I've demonstrated how to get your values, so to speak. Yes. If you find this video very interesting, please don't forget to like it. Please subscribe, comment, and share to your friends. See you in the next practical quizzes.